here we are at the top four table. We have Giants of Cube sitting down, ready to battle it out to see who's going to be the next Holiday Cube champion and win a set of M12 for the person that they've championed. Hey everyone, and we are back. I'm Milo, and I'm joined in the booth with Ad uh, Adrian once again. Bonjour. Uh, we're watching the first semifinals match, Mark Anderson versus Ibrahim. Yes, I'm excited. Now, we haven't seen either of these decks in action yet, we so... We have not. Let's chat about them briefly, shall we? Fresh luck right now. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. Uh, Mark is playing like a, a reanimator deck. Uh, green black reanimator uh, using that whip of Erebos, which we see so much in standard right now. Yep, and um, Ibrahim is playing a just guy kind of tempo deck. So, so we'll see how, how it goes. Uh, Mark uh, won the die roll, plays turn one Lanor Elves. Uh, it's wearing a baseball cap. That was the first altar in my cube ever. It's done my, by my friend uh, Seba. <laughs> <laughs> and he follows it up with a Yavin My Elder. Yeah, strong plays for Mark. Uh, it's almost as if he's on turn three or something. Oh, yeah, I know, right? right? Well, that's a cube job for you. Oh, we got a Phantasmal Image uh, choosing to have my Elder, which is especially juicy for a blue-red deck, getting some uh, mana advantage. Um, it's great because even if he does target the Phantasmal Image and it dies, he still gets the uh, the benefit of getting those two lands. Absolutely. So that's going to be good for, uh, for Ibrahim. Should he choose... Target. Yes. This is already a very exciting game. I'm already on board with this game. Do you think he should block here? Mm. His hand is just full of land. Yeah, he. I, I think that he needs to get land out of his deck to have some wide draws here, right? So, yep. uh, it so might not be a bad option to block. He doesn't. He, he doesn't. Chooses, yeah. chooses not to. Maybe he wants the extra. The card. card. Yeah. yeah. The card is also oh, we have a turn three harmonize though. Oh my gosh. So again, card advantage, big deal, right? So let's see what he working draws. We don't see what his draw is. I do see a Venser in his hand, though. Okay. It looks like his deck's all about shenanigans. Um, Mark Anderson, though, is a very tough opponent. He has... Oh... He drew a bonfire off the top. Off the top, so he's going to bonfire here. For That's the, the miracle. Wall, the miracle, yeah. Going to get rid of the Yavimaya yeah, Elder. The entire board, actually. And Swing for two. Yes. He's going to wait for, for Mark to fetch his lands out. Right. Yeah. Um, which is not bad for Mark. I mean, he's gonna have he's gonna get you know value mm -hmm. that way. Um, Special uh, shout out to Jeff Greenberg for trading me that foiled bonfire. <laughs> way to go, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks, <laughs> thanks buddy. <laughs> um, uh, as expected. Yeah. Two damage. And um, a fetch line for Ibrahim. Oh, he drew ah, the best the possible card. The Eye of Sol Ring, here it is. <laughs> the Eye of Sol Ring. Um, um, Mark only has half his deck in his hand. Yeah, so. he's just like holding out like a mitt full of crazy. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see. We'll see what direction he wants to uh, go in. Many different options for him. Now, Mark Anderson is definitely a player that you have to look out for. Uh, he's definitely the best player uh, in the in the group, the most accomplished player. Yes, the most you accomplished have, You would player, have to absolutely. say. He's been on the Canadian national team twice. He came 12th in Worlds. Uh, in the last the last Worlds... On Breakers. Really. Yeah, on Breakers. He could... The, the person who came in 8th had the same Breakers as That's right. Yeah. That's crazy. So like, that, is, that is nuts. Isn't that nuts? That's like, you know, the highest level of competition That's you could right. possibly absolutely. be. And he, he showed what he had. And he decides to play thoughts. He's here. He's going to take a look at Ibrahim's hand and assess uh, the threats. Right. Well, that's a smart play. Um, he's going to see a planeswalker, Fencer, in this case, uh, Boros Charm, and some lands. Three lands. Yeah, three lands. You're going to have to go with the Fencer here. I think it totally limits what he's able to do. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's I think what he's doing. Um, yeah, like I said before, I think um, it's important for Ibrahim to get rid of that uh, young my elder um, and draw into some gas here. We'll see what he does. He may choose not to. Yeah, he he can't do it this turn anyway because it, the activation costs two. So yeah, he's gonna have to do it next turn maybe. He cracks the fetch land. Uh, yeah, that's a good smart play as well. That's too, yeah. along the lines of what you were talking about, right? Yeah. You want to thin the deck uh, of land. 
while it's a plateau, but he wants to g grab the comes into play tap line yeah. so he doesn't have to take exactly. damage if he draws it. Just mitigating damage loss. He's got he's a, his life total is at 17, so he's okay for now. But yeah, Ibrahim is, is no slouch either. He's a... He's, oh, that Ibrahim. He's a that solid player. non-slouchiness. And I, you know what? In the last, like, three years in my cube, the the only decks who have won a, a major cube tournament have been blue-red. So... Mm, you had to remind me, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... Yeah. Uh, so he is playing the colors... Let's see if uh, oh, oh, we got a flash and boon set. It's not bad. End of turn. Didn't block it. No. 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 End of turn. He's not trading his four two. No way. For that. Uh, I, I'm, how do you feel about boon set, set here? Obviously, it's in your cube, but uh, I haven't had a chance to play with it. Good. Bad. You know what? I haven't had a chance to play with it either. I'm very excited to see how it turns out here. Seems very powerful. Seems aggressive in this situation. Sol ring taps for two. Ugh. I'm generally a pretty. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I know you like that one. Oh, I love that card. Just changes all sorts of math and a whip. And gain four life. Why not? All that hard work that Ibrahim. Yep. Yeah. That building's negated. All creatures you control gain life link is not. Uh, is not irrelevant. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's the opposite. Yeah. In fact, you you could say it's possibly relevant. Possibly relevant or super relevant. You really continues to draw land. This is not. Uh, he great, finally great he's situation. finally got that planes in play. Yeah. He see to play. now here's a problem. I see that he's got a oh he's gonna play it anyway. The mana war. If he targets Boon Seder, first of all he could just make him target the spell sky. But right. if he doesn't, he could then next turn put the Boon Seder on the spell spell sky. Right. So this is this is not a great. Um, I mean, he's got to do what he's got to do. State. Yeah, of course, yeah, absolutely. He's got to sort of try and punch through in a way, right? Is that a corpse dance? Uh, it's him to Turok. Which is pretty powerful here. I, I agree. Um, Mark got that information earlier with the thought sees, right? So he knows that, that, that Boros Charm is still in Ibrahim's hand, and if he wants to get rid of it, perhaps... I mean, and and then Ibrahim, uh, one of his lines could be to sack the you have my elder to get a couple lands in his hand. To and to, yeah, to, to protect that Boros charm. Yeah, because that's, that's all he's got going for him, right? Let's see what happens though. I think he's gonna hit him. He probably. It looks like it. He's tapping the right mana. The suspense. Maybe not. <laughs> the suspense. He tricked us. He tricked us. We thought we were, we were going to see a him to Torak. He plays the land. So he has how much? It costs five mana to put the boon setter. So you're right about that. He's going to bestow the boon. Yeah. Um, so now we have a four six. Four six spell sky with life link. With life link, yeah. And. I would not be surprised if he turns around and gets set into the red zone. I, you know, when I put Spellskite in the cube originally, I thought it was a sideboard card, but you think it's main deck? Oh, absolutely. Well, here's the Hintatora you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So it's going to come down, it's going to f potentially force a sacrifice. We'll see. Uh, no, no. Because he'd be losing board position to do it, so... Oh, he got the Boros Charm. He got the Boros Charm. And the Mountain. I see, so he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to block and then sack so that the, the life link does not... So that's a, that's a smart play for me. Yeah. So keeps it's, him sort of in the running at the moment. It's an, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's an, actually an eight-point life swing, right? Yeah. Because yeah. he would gain it four and... Yeah. So, so um, I guess he didn't really care about the Boros Charm, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, this is a better... Um, Line. Line to keep him in, in the game. Yeah, I think so, so yeah. yeah. Those are lands. We'll see what it draws. Needs a little bit of gas, a little, little bit of help here, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. I don't know what I was thinking. Because this way, 
like Boros Charm, one of the best case scenarios is you you deal four damage to your opponent, right? Right. This is like eight. It's like dealing four and gaining four, right? The way he played it, and he still might have been able to keep it if he right. got lucky. Right, right, right. Like this was a way better line. That's why he's at the top four, yeah. and I'm sitting and in the booth. We are sitting in the booth. Yeah. So sad. All right. What's Don't gonna happen me. now? So we got uh, we got the, the the draw off of. Phantasmal Limit, here comes a land. Um, we don't know what he, what's in Ibrahim. Yeah, it could be anything. It could be anything. He's hiding from, the, from our cameras. These two have been hiding from our cameras for four rounds. That's right. It's about time that they're in front of it. That's right. And these are, again, two, two of the favorites from My Little Gathering. If you want to see more action from Ibrahim, Shum, and Mark Anderson, you should definitely check out the other videos on this channel. Because they are in a lot of them. So shameless. So shameless. <laughs> shameless promotion. Hey, I gotta do what I gotta do, okay, all right, man? All right, all right, Do it. Everyone do it. Right now. <laughs> Check out the other channel. Not right now. Just finish the game. All right, all right. Just finish the, finish the match. All right. But you might want to bookmark uh, it <laughs> and... Uh... So Ibrahim did nothing this turn. Uh, again, we don't know what's in his hand, so we don't know what he's capable of doing. There may be... Um, may be sneaky about this and have some sort of play. We'll see. Oh, maybe he's going to reanimate something. Uh -oh. oh, he is. Looks like it's the, the Yavimai Yavimai. Elder. Not a bad choice. <laughs> not a bad choice at all. Um, considering it nets him so much card advantage. Again, are we talking about this? Does he get the lands? What does it read? Uh... Uh, yes, he does get the lands. As long as he sacrifices it, yes. He chose a group when it's put into the graveyard. That's right. So the whip says oh, so maybe if not. it goes... Yeah, yeah. So maybe not. But he still gets to draw a card. Yes. If you sack it. So we have Cryptic Command. Cryptic Command taps everything down. And draws, and draws a card. card. Yep. A nice play from Ibrahim there. Yes, I Again, he's, he's digging for solutions. Mm hmm. And of course, with the Spell Sky, you don't want to sort of have to target things. That, exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. We have a survival. Because then Boon Sats falls off, and there's all sorts of trouble. The survival of the fittest is a serious problem. And a seriously modified card. What? Yeah, I had a... Uh, my Friedlander altered the Survival of the Fittest and the Recurring Nightmare so that they looked similar and people would see the combo who weren't familiar. Hmm. And I'm very impressed that both uh, Ibrahim and Mark... I mean, Mark's a pro. Ibrahim's been playing this game for so long that they knew not to go get the lines from that uh, you know, my Elder. Right. That's very awesome. Everyone's on point. Except, Everybody is on point. Except me. Wow. Got to pick up my game. <laughs> All right. So what's going to happen now? We have the survival. We have a whip. It's just uh, yeah. That's not crazy. Great right? You start throwing. We don't, do we know if uh, Mark has a, a creature? creature in his hand at the moment? I'm not sure. We're gonna see. But this is basically how Grizzle Brands come into play. Mm, that's right. right. Uh, I see Zealous Conscripts in Ibrahim's hand. I do see that, yeah. Um, that could be very, very interesting. We'll see how uh, Mark reacts to that. There's a lot going on in Ibrahim's hand. He's also got a Chandra Pyromancer, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple lands there. Right? Uh, but one of them's a Celestial Colonnade. Oh! That's one of my favorite man lands. Yeah, it's I just think really, it's the best one. really yeah. just punches... Punches hard when it, when the the black blue one is also really good. Yeah, it really fits in well into a Jeskai deck as well. Oh yes, color wise, yeah. yeah. Here we go. I mean, Action from Ibrahim. It was Sean McLaren, right, who won a Pro Tour with a Jeskai deck that had right. Celestial Colonnades in it. Chandra Pyromancer, one damage to Spell Sky, right? Yep. And one damage to Mark. One damage to Mark. On the uptick. I mean, that's pretty much. Like the best line you can hope for, right? You just gotta hope he doesn't have a creature. Let's see. You gotta hope that the. I see two lands. Two lands and third card that we don't know. We're just trying to peer over and see if I can see. Does he have a damnation? Was that a damnation? Spell Sky in the red zone. Yeah, it's a damnation. It's a damnation, okay. Attacking Chandra, wants to get her off the table. It is threatening in a way, right? Yeah. 
Sure. Playing it safe. Still, still gaining lots of life because of the whip. Mm -hmm. The whip. <laughs> he bring one taps. Celestial Clown has none play. Off to the corner of the screen. And he just takes the whip. Just takes see, that's a, that's a play that not a lot of people think about. Yeah, just taking the whip and putting You're it on the side of the table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no? Okay. All right. Man, if Ibrahim had a tranquility, <laughs> he'd kill the whip, the survival, and the boom sailor. <laughs> All sorts of craziness would happen with the tranquility. A single tranquility would <laughs> just swing the game in his that's favor right. so hard. And Ibrahim's not in a bad position here. He, he has options. He has that... Uh, Zealous conscripts in hand, just he waiting could, for the right moment, right? He could zero Chandra. He could zero Chandra, yeah. So we'll see what he does. We have five mana and a Malo. Oh, Maloku now there's Chandra. a big card. Yes, absolutely. Again, a little bit outclassed by some of the craziness that's been coming out in recent years, but. Nothing to scoff at. No, no, no. To say the least. Because uh, Maloku can, at any moment, just you bring all your lands to your hand and win the game, right? Right. So uptick again, one damage. Because there's probably a lot of spells he can't cast for three mana. Right. Makes sense. And here comes... You see that life gain from the whip, uh, though? It's just so bad, right? Yes, yeah, it's brutal. So bad. But you're, if you're not blocking with it, you might as well be swinging with it. Right. That's a that's a basic rule of magic. You got it. Oh, is that an eternal witness? Uh oh, things are getting oh, stupid. If that's an eternal. What do you get back? You get back the uh, harmonize or the hymn to Turok? Take your pick. Both. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Maybe both. Maybe both. Or a creature, and then you can start the chain of creatures with survival. Right. So Mark, Mark's just going to assess here, again, his line and see what he wants Or you do. survival the Eternal Witness. Right. And then you go get another creature. Or and then you bring back... Or, yeah, yeah, another creature. And then you bring back the, the Eternal, Eternal Witness. witness. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, this is... This is why these guys are at the top tables today. Although I would have liked to see Ian here. Ah yes, Ian, <laughs> Ian deck was so your cool. favorite deck of the of the. Oh, uh, it was amazing! Game. How could it not be your favorite deck at the tournament? Soft locks with strip mines oh. and and Britta Gargan for days. Sneaks and who knows shows. It's a great six. No, great three. <laughs> Show and tell. All the. So what uh, did you bring to school today? Brought this greater Gargan. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, uh, here's damnation. Now this is interesting. He this is a great damnation. Because to... you still get your boon Seder, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you kill the Chandra. Right. Why not? And the boon Seder has uh, when it when it falls off has haste, right? Yep, yep. I'm pretty sure it does. Yep, yep. And so Chandra will likely perish. Now your boon decides not to return any lands to his hand. Why? Why would he? Right? Yeah. So boon sat here comes in. Chandra goes away. It looks like, uh, with the way Ibrahim's graveyard is, that's all a graveyard, like, it's not an exile pile yes, or anything. Yes, yes. It looks like he's ready for a storm, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> that's what storm, like, graveyards that do storm combos yeah. look like. And it's interesting to see different players tend to orient their uh, decks in different ways with graveyards and things like that, right? Yes. We have uh, that soul ring hiding up, up on top of your yeah. screen. Uh, almost. He, uh, does, he wants him to forget that exists, yeah, right? Yeah. That's the kind of I manner. forget. The Eye of Soul Ring. That was done by the artist. Tedden? Yeah. Tedden. Marcus Tedden. So he plays it. Gets back. Spellscape? Spellscape. That is... Leave Spellscape in his hand, just, pass the turn. Yeah. He just got a creature. He has so some options, yeah, absolutely. So that he can he could, he could have also gone uh, him to Tora, get rid of Ibrahim's hand. Um, if he was worried about that in some way. Yeah, yeah. he could have. <laughs> Alright, so what does Ibrahim draw here? This is a big draw step. Oh, and it looks like a real card. 
Oh, it could be uh, Keldon Marauders. Keldon Marauders. So, not the turn for it. We're in late game now. Yeah. I think, would you be swinging with the Colony? No, you want to block with Colony, right? Mm, What's Colony? I, I don't, I don't, three, I don't four. know if I would block the, the, the Boon Sats here with Colony. It seems like bad trades at that point. Yeah, um, and you definitely don't want to kill the Eternal Witness. And knowing that he can just re bring it back. Yeah, right? get so, anything. So I think that... that it, but it also has Vigilance. So I would I would probably try to get in here. Um, it's so difficult to mitigate all this... this life gain. Life gain, yeah. Yes, absolutely. you're right. You're right. Um, I am not envious of Ibrahim's position right now. It must be a little <laughs> bit frustrating. He does, he does do that, right? Yeah. As we speak of it, he does it. Um, and then the blocker. Yeah, that's that makes a little bit more sense, sure. right? Because that, that now this is a better trade with the four two. Yeah. Um, so end of turn. Let's go get every amazing creature in my deck and put it in the graveyard. Well, he only do it once, twice. He can only do it twice. Three times. <laughs> no, um, twice, because he only got, he only has two green sources up right at the moment, right? What do you mean? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But but putting two juicy creatures or putting one juicy creature, one in the juicy graveyard. creature, and two because you can untap and. Right. Put something else. He puts a secure tribe builder in there. So juicy. And Grizzle a Brand. <laughs> One of my favorite cards. It's so rewarding just to slam it down and draw seven cards and then kill yeah. yourself. <laughs> I mean, no. But your opponent definitely doesn't like seeing that. No, I, I do not like playing against Grizzle Brand. Especially because it's so rewarding. I feel like. There was a, a, a match between you and myself, a casual match of cube, where I drew uh, uh, 20, uh, <laughs> 21 cards, 21 20 cards off Grizzlebrand and lost. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that may have, might that have, that happened. May have happened. yeah. That and, like, and you killed me. It wasn't because, like, <laughs> because I drew all my whole deck or something. So oh, just, just hard cast. cast. <laughs> just hard cast Grizzlebrand. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's, that's positive. It's just like, forget this reanimation nonsense, I'm just going to hard cast it and, and let you deal with it. Because that's the turn. <laughs> solo and fast turn. Um, Alright, Ibrahim, draw something awesome. Tick down. But we know the treachery and the control magic is in yeah, Chris Haas' deck. Right? That's in Chris Haas' deck. We'll draw something awesome. You need it right now. Definitely going with the Kelden Marauders this turn. And in case one instance of life link wasn't good enough, now there are double life. No, no it used good. to be a thing. Just oh, <laughs> oh, this is could be the it. zealous conscripts zealous on conscripts? the Grizzle Brand. Does not have Mark does not have protection. The spell sky's dead. The, because the spell sky's dead. Ibrahim takes control of Grizzle Brand. Will he draw seven cards? I think you should draw the seven cards first before going into attack stuff. Yeah. But who knows? He decides to attack first. Because it depends. He knows his deck better than I do. Right. I don't know if he's got a way to close out the game. Now, this turn. now, would you have attacked with Zealous Conscripts in this instance? It depends what I was trying to do with this turn. Um, he's he's going to draw the seven cards. I, I would definitely want to see. You see, that's part of the reason why I'd draw my cards first. Because I'd want to see exactly what my options are and if there's a chance that I could kill him this turn. Right. Because there is a chance. There is in cube. There's always a chance, but like, it seems pretty far away. Like he's at nine, and he had two blockers. I, hundred percent, I can tell you right now, he would have blocked with the Eternal Witness. Right, the, it, that card is better in the graveyard than it is in play. Plus, you gain two life. Right. And we know that the Boros Charm is in the, in the graveyard, but that does provide double strike for certain. Oh my God, that would have been so juicy right? right now. People seem to forget that that's the case. Never forget. Gain 14 life, deal 14 damage. Right? All sorts of shenanigans. That's something I haven't seen in Q. Double striking? Uh, uh, Grizzle Brand. Grizzle Brand? <laughs> draw 14 cards. Draw 14 cards. Uh, don't worry about the life. I'm just going to go ahead and draw 14. <laughs> Alright, Ibrahim. He passes the turn? Is that what he just did there? He did. Pass it just sucks back. that you don't have a, a way to like a sack outlet for Grizzlebrain. Not that it matters. I mean, Mark is gonna reanimate it anyway. But it would be nice to know that he can only do it once. And Mark has already gotten rid of Ibrahim's 
Benser, uh, which is a tricky little combo with Zell's Conscripts, continually bringing it back and mm-hmm. um, getting control of things. It, it, bring, it puts it back into its owner's control, right? Yes. Benser? Yes. You can't gain control of your opponents because they've ran forever. Right? No, not forever, never. But it does. It does. It does um, bring Zell's Conscripts back into play. Mm-hmm. At end of turn. At end of turn, yeah. So maybe not so good. But there's a lot of things. Making everything unblockable would have also been. Yes, absolutely. The straight nuts. And of course, the ultimate is just bananas. Yes. Exile. Deal all with your whip, your survival. Yeah, your yeah, yeah. Get rid of all these problem cards. So here, Mark is contemplating. He's come so close that this is definitely a game he doesn't want to lose. I think he ended up drawing that mirror battle sphere. Yep. So he may he might cycle this for another creature. And then reanimate and it. And then reanimate it. Kill him. See if he can kill him. Yeah. Because he would take four immediately from the mirror battle sphere, right? Brings right. him to nine. Right. He takes seven from Grizzlebrand. Right. And so and he would have to block two more. He'd have to block both creatures. So, no, oh yeah, yeah, six. and then two more. You're right. Two more? Yeah, Seven, so and then, yeah, he, two more, yeah. It's not quite there. What? No, that's exactly. Was it? Yeah, yeah, because he takes seven from Grizzlebrand, bringing him to six, and then he takes four from your yeah, Battlesphere exactly immediately. It. So we'll see if uh, Mark... Are they able to? But again, he's got cards in hand. Of course, so you never know. You never know. You don't want to so risk too risk much when you're so is. ahead, right? So that's a good question. Is it is it risking too much? The only problem is if you can lose on a crackback. And I don't think and he you does can. have lifelink. So he's, he's yeah because the mere battle sphere, the four damage that it deals immediately, no matter what, is you gain that life. Because it's the mere battle sphere dealing it. Right, plus it does an additional, uh, in that case, 8 damage, right? Yeah. So that's 12 plus... The only... Pr- okay, so, so this... Ni- so 19, that's crazy. Lots of life for Mark Anderson. <laughs> yeah. But the issue is, does he have something that can... Disrupt that flow, yeah. Exactly. Like, if, like a cryptic command, a cryptic command stops all that. You lose the game. You could lose the game if he had a cryptic command, right? Right. Like you bring back your mirror battle sphere. Although on the other on, on the other side of the board, the, the Helen Rodders are going to vanish. Right? Yeah. Okay, that's true. The three three on its own is just a, just that. So here's a whip. And he's going to bring back. He's going to go with a different line. Spell sky. That's interesting. There goes the mirror battle sphere. In the yard, and he gets. Is there a creature that reanimates? Oh, Herald of Torrent. He's gonna get there another way, <laughs> a way that he can use Spell Skite to to support to support it. Yeah. yeah. An even safer line he has come up with. Put it on the Moon So that's four, five, six, seven, fourteen. There's a miscalculation. Oh my god. A nice miscalc there. Yeah, Timing. very good. He needed it. He would be dead if he didn't have it. Ooh. Mark had thought he came up with all the answers there. Went against the grain. Didn't do the most obvious play. Yeah, come on. Like, go with the commentators, yo. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I could never have seen that. No, no I've never seen that. <laughs> Kudos to Mark for that. Yeah, yeah. Sense. Mark, Mark's actual like line that he took was way better than anything I could think of. <laughs> but he got burned on it. Going in with the spell skate? No. It's hard to see the spell skate's kind of off camera. Spell skate's gonna go away anyway. Yeah, he just kept it. Untapped anyway. Yeah, it's gonna go away. Uh, but Mark is going to, going to gain his life and back up to 16 he goes. And the turn is over. This yeah. is a, a grindy sort of game. Grindy, yeah, absolutely. Spellskite is still on the table. 
both players have gained seven life and drawn seven cards off of a grizzle brand in this game. <laughs> Crazy. But not the craziest we've seen today. I know. Crazy, <laughs> right? That's insane. Oh That's what Cube Magic's all about, though, right? Shenanigans. That's a reman that you ruined your. And a Geist of Saint Is that correct? Yeah, I think he's got a Geist in hand, too. Mutavolt comes down. A little bit off camera. I like Mutavolt a lot. Yeah. It fits into a lot of different. Do you, you like Muta Vault more than uh, Mistress Factory? Uh, no, I like the the, the factory one. the factory more because it pumps itself. It does, but it doesn't count as all creature types. Ah, uh, it's okay. <laughs> it doesn't pump your Rabble Master. You're right. It doesn't. You can't sack and it. It doesn't. Siege gang. It has no synergy with Merfolk. Yep. It doesn't get pumped by Mayor of Avonbrook. And we got the Geist of St. Traff. That's the uh, WMCQ promo. Ooh la la. That was the best thing that happened to me at the WMCQ. Because <laughs> I got crushed. Not really. Yeah, it was like 3-3. Three and three. Oh, okay. That's a crush. That's not bad. I mean... It's alright. Uh, we got Mana Crypt, drawn by Mark Anderson, which I highly doubt is going to see any play this game. Yeah, it's just smarter for him to keep it in his hand. It's got all the mana he needs. Yeah. If you're hard casting Grizzle Brand already, yeah. there's no need for more mana and to put yourself into a situation where you're, you're just getting lightning bolted yeah, every time for no reason. Right? I've, yeah. Even with oh, the weapon play. It's, it's been like five rolls straight where it's like, ow, ow, ow. It's happened to me. I would reanimate the Herald of Torment, maybe. I, I'm done speculating. I have no idea what he's going to do. <laughs> all sorts of shenanigans. But you're right, very sort of meticulous, kind of methodical playing on both ends. Uh, difficult to break through, right? Yep. Um, E-Ring's done a great job with the amount of life that Mark has been gaining. Yes. It's tremendous, really, right? I mean, the obvious line here is that Ibrahim's just going to is just going to animate the Celestial Colonnade and block the Grizzle Brand. And now he's doing a little finger dance. Yeah, that was a nice finger dance, Ibrahim, thank you. Is that for our benefit or for his viewers at home? <laughs> All the people that have been hashtagging Team EB. Team EB got the finger dance. Hashtag finger dance. Hashtag. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, we're gonna use that soaring mana. Near Battle Sphere. Here it comes. Here I am. So many mirrors. So little time. Bro, do you even mirror? There's, you see, also, uh, Mutavolt could, uh, you could tap it. Could be a mirror. It could be a mirror. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. look at all the ways you could use Mutavolt. He's just getting in there. This is, this is the thing that's happening. Um, this is the line that we were talking about earlier. Ibrahim's got a gemstone mine, island, prophetic flame speaker. So I think what you do is you pack him up. Pack him up. <laughs> um, Ibrahim decides that he's going to gain number two. Uh, let's take a quick look at Ibrahim's sideboard while sure. we shuffle up. Um, what do you think needs to come in here? Um, you can get aggressive with the Stromkirk Noble. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's a mana vault in the board. Interesting. So perhaps be, uh, to be a little bit more aggressive, you would want to bring that amount of ult in. Uh, oh, do you know what would actually be kind of good? Is a Jockalops. Yeah, yeah. Just cleans everything up, right? Yeah, so he plays his whip, he plays, you know, uh, his survival of the fittest. Yeah. And oh I no, Jockalops only gets artifacts, creatures, and lands. Right? Yeah, and I think we'll see a, a council's uh, judgment potentially coming in. If he has enough play. white sources, I don't think he has oh, enough he, white he may sources. not, he may not. Um, but that might be an interesting option. Uh, yeah. Certainly, Ghostly Prison might be. Oh option yeah, too, right? yeah. Just Ghostly Prison to stop. Seems good. Uh, sorry, Mark from attacking in the early game. But if he does want to bring in that Stormcrook Noble and go for a uh, more aggressive build, he could also bring in Cargan Dragon Lord, and he could bring in uh, Jackal Pop, and maybe even Molten Tail Massacre. Potentially, yeah. 
and I don't think that would be the worst thing in the world. Sort of transform uh, his deck a little bit. Um, but we saw that from the, in that game that, that Ibrahim's uh, draws were not the greatest, so hopefully that will be better this game, right? What about Mark? What do you think Mark's going to bring in? Um, good question. I mean, the, there's a Triskelion in the sideboard. That's very potent and powerful. Um, that's like your favorite card. Oh, right? I love Triskelion. So good. And Chainer's Edict is pretty good when your opponent doesn't play that many creatures. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ancestral Vision? No, he's playing Green Black. Uh, he has the Creeping Tarpet. Yeah, and I don't think Living Death is um, required, but certainly it, it is something that could be considered. You bring Mulligans here, um, which is unfortunate. And uh, Doomblade hits everything. Yeah, in Doomblade does hit everything, except for the uh, guys to attack. Track. Yes. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, now, he, Mark Anderson has a Mox Diamond in the board. Do you ever, like, for me personally, the way I play Magic is that if I draft Lotus Petal or Mox Diamond, I put them in every single deck. Every deck? Main deck? Yep. Uh, it depends on what kind of um, deck I am playing. If it's leaning towards a little bit more aggressive, then yes, it will. Because your meta counts are a little bit lower, so you can get away with 16 land. Uh, maybe 16 plus a mock, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas if I'm playing more of a tempo or a control type of deck, I tend not to include it. When you are building a cube deck and you have a card like Lotus, Petal, or Mox Diamond, uh, Mox Diamond in particular, uh, do you count that as a land? Generally, yes. You do. do because it does or cost a you a land or even half a land right yeah. the, the the lotus petal for sure I, I would definitely count as half land or as a land most of the time I count lotus petal as a land yeah the problem is you don't want to flood out later on in late game right mm -hmm. that's, that's, that can be and then in, this, in a game like this that can be a big problem right where you have uh, it's sort of, sort of a grindy game takes a little bit longer things like that right it's a bit of an uphill battle now for Ibrahim because he's playing against um, the most accomplished player at the cube and uh, he's down a game. And he just got thought seized. And he just got thought seized. Exactly. And, and truthfully, thought seized, in my opinion, is one of the most powerful cards. Um, yeah, I would say specifically so. in cube because what you're getting from your thought seized is not only just information, but you're taking the best cards potentially out of your opponent's hand. Like, and sometimes you take the only card that made that hand keepable. Exactly. Exactly. Like a library or a soul ring or something like that. Probably not a library. Well, maybe not. <laughs> but I get you. You see a brimstone. It could be a library. We talking about? It's not mine, right? Oh right. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> so that was interesting. That was an interesting line by Mark. He decided not to play turn one soul ring. Instead, he played turn one thought sees. He wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to get yeah. aggroed out. Right? Got the information he needed, then played the Sol Ring uh, to set up a turn 5 on turn 3 effectively. Yep. There's oh, he, did, he boarded it's, in he boarded that turn. He brought it in. Um, I love that art on the snow covered mountain. The uh, Looks like a pterodactyl or something in the back. Some, some sort of Drake pterodactyl, dinosaurs. Yeah, maybe actually. <laughs> There were dinosaurs in Ice Age. There were. Apparently, there is a plane in Magic the Gathering that is a dinosaur plane. Full of dinosaurs? Yeah, it's a prehistoric fantasy plane. Oh, perhaps we'll That's see that in the near future. Hopefully. I saw it actually on Tolarian Community College's YouTube channel. And he talked about it, that it was the plane he most wants to see wizards go to. Like I Allosaurus it's... Rider? Yeah. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> I don't know. And I th There's a whip cool. again. Oh my gosh. The yeah, the whip, whip is brutal. The, the whip, whip. followed and, and a him to Torak. I, I can, I can, I feel Ibrahim's pain right now. I feel his pain. He gets he's a land being, He's and being thought seized and him to Torak. His hand is being taken apart. And Mark has just split a whip. You know what? That's how you beat Blue Red. That's how you beat a lot of decks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you beat a lot of things. Maybe not Frank. No, even Frank. This is a great card for Ibrahim. Yeah, you gotta start making up that card yeah. disadvantage. Yeah, he's uh, really something that Mark has to deal with. Luckily, he's, he's got that cheat out. Uh, <laughs> and enough mana to flash it back next time. Oh, he's thinking about animating the Muni Vault. Great play by. Great response. That's very, very good. good. Very, very good. Um, 
But Mark you're not getting the blood through. gift demon. Unless you have more shenanigans. So Mark's, Mark, Mark is just really managing Ibrahim's resources in a way, right? He's yes. really putting him uh, to certain decisions. He's making him get rid of his lands, gets rid of his creatures, gets rid of his hand. Yeah. Just picking him apart. And now this blood gift demon is gaining five life every turn. It's true. Ibrahim does have a brimstone volley. I see a, I see an interesting line with that. Yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Flames Weaver, first strike, yeah, first kill strike, it. first strike, kill it. Get your one damage here. Flip a card. Hope it's a land. Here it is. Let's see if he uh, is on the same plan as you. Oh, oh, he didn't see it. He didn't see it. Eternal Witness. Oh my Welcome. gosh. Another and Blood Gift Demon. Welcome Mark's to Magic. Welcome hosted to, uh, by uh, Mark Anderson. Uh, hosted by Mark Anderson, yeah. Yeah, not much you can do at this point. Ibrahim must be frustrated. Yeah, He's come this uh, far. Uh, I feel like. Made it to the top four and then yeah. he has to run into Mark Anderson. Body language a little bit, but. That's okay. Well, there could be something crazy on the top of his deck. Let's find out. Coming in for seven. Life link, of course. Yep. Has enough mana to flashback any flashback the changes you That's the thing that Blood Gift Demon was missing. Life link. And he's drawing two cards a turn. Yep. Pernicious deed. So he can pop Pernicious deed for three, and he loses his Eternal Witness and his Saw Ring and destroys the Crystal Shard. Uh, he's frustrated. He's done. All right, that was it. Uh, join us next time for round two of the semifinals.